of the respect and everything that you all have given us. There's just a lot of, a lot of things going on here that we've got to settle down and, and get calm through. We wanted to get, get out some message to our community because it matters, right? The most important asset we have is our young people and our youth of this city. You know, our number one goal is to make sure that they're safe. And that's what they're doing right now as we speak. At 11.30, well, I, I guess I should start. I have Dr. Parker with me, school superintendent. We've been in con uh, constant communication since the, uh, since the incident happened. Uh, Chief Johnson, I have Representative Brian Dugan from the FBI. Uh, and then we have a plethora of resources. The state police is here. Numerous federal agencies are here. And the, the, the most impressive thing is the communication working together. But I want to share with you a little bit about what we know. Bear with me because there's some things that I can't go into and there's some things that I don't, but I will try to clear up some of the things that, that the community and concerns that we have going on, okay? 11.38 today, we responded to a, a call of a shooting inside here at Heritage High School. Officers responded. Uh, inside, we had, uh, as we had, as you imagine, a little bit of chaotic scene. It was to try to get things under control as quickly as we could, locate our shooter and protect our students. The school has been completely evacuated. We did that with federal resources and primarily the Newport News Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, and firemen helping us along with paramedics. We transported four, maybe five individuals to area hospitals. Two are suffering from a gunshot wound. One has been struck uh, in, the, in the side of the face area. One has been struck in the lower leg. Both of those shooting victims are 17. I have a male that has been shot in the side of the face and a female that's been shot in the lower leg. The reports I just got from the hospital is neither one are considered life-threatening. And I thank God for that. That is the most important thing, those two individuals, first off. The individual has also been transported that had a, a sprained or broken arm. I don't want to go too much into that because I'm not sure exactly, but Chief Johnson followed up with that for me. I believe that happened when as individuals were running out of the school, may have fallen and fallen on his arm. But we'll find more about that. Another individual that had asthma was transported for breathing issues. All right. We're hearing that there may be another that went straight to a, another hospital, but we, we know that we only have, at this point, two, two shooting uh, uh, victims. Once the school was evacuated, uh, Chief Creswell handled the scene outside, along with Chief Johnson, myself and Chief Grinstead uh, with the, the assets inside. Uh, Captain Hires, his precinct, uh, facilitated getting the students out. I will tell you the teachers did an amazing job. Students did an amazing job funneling through. We, re we placed most of them, and Dr. Parker will probably be more elaborate than I am, but to outside the building to towards the tennis courts, and he can talk to you a little bit about how we're getting students home. But at this point right now, uh, the FBI and, and the, the police department are surgically going through and searching, along with state troopers, are searching the, every inch of the school. They've given us uh, the master keys. We'll go through and check every room, every, every hallway, closet, gymnasium, library. I'm not rushing through that. I need to make sure that there's no one else inside that school. We don't believe there's anyone injured. It is very possible and probable. We may find a student or a, a teacher, uh, an employee that, that didn't answer right away, that might have been scared. It's in a closet or in a locked room. But that, we anticipate that. But that's what we're doing right now is at least searching to make sure that everything's OK. I really appreciate, I understand how chaotic it has been for parents to try to figure out what's happened and what's going on. I think the parents have done an amazing job. Uh, family members that have come, I, I, can under, I understand that just the uncertainty, is my child OK? So we're trying to get as much information out as we can. I will tell you that there's been some inf uh, evidence recovered at the, at the scene and in other parts of the school grounds. But I don't want to go into that because there's kind of three components we have working right now. We have our component at the hospital making sure that our two victims are OK. I need to be constant updated on how they're doing. The second is the tactical exercise that's going on inside the building, making sure that everything is cleared uh, and the buildings are safe and we don't have anyone else inside. The third component then is trying to find our, our suspect there is, some, uh, there is some footage and some evidence there that we're, we're looking at. We'll be using, working with the FBI and, and schools to give us some information, um, but I'm confident we'll be able to determine who this individual is. The why and all those things will follow later. We'll find that, but I need to make sure that people are okay. I cannot thank enough um, Dr. Parker and his staff. They just did a phenomenal job, sir. Um, Chief Johnson and the fire department. I've been in contact with uh, the city manager, Cindy Roth, immediately. Um, so there's a lot of information going. Things are working the way we'd like them to, to see work. Uh, but I, but I, I do want to, I understand it is a little bit chaotic. Um, and, and I understand that families not knowing what's going on with, their, with their, their loved ones. But I just appreciate so much the students and how the faculty and staff have responded, as well as the officers here. Um, I'm going to step out of the way. Uh, I don't Chief want to, Drew, real quick. So the suspect is not in custody? The suspect is not in custody at this time. Is the suspect a student? We're trying to put all that together. Do you believe that the victims were known to the suspect? Yes. 
Could you elaborate not, on a fight that was going on in the cafeteria? No, nope, I don't. No, nope, I don't. Because, Is there an active threat to the so community? The, so right the now? reason. So let me. So again, right? Let's just make sure we get accurate information. The most important thing is making sure that everyone's okay, clearing the school. There's a whole other component of the department looking to see who this individual is and why that happened. We do believe that they knew each other, um, but but until that individual is in custody, you know, when you ask me about a threat, I don't I don't believe that this is an individual that is that is searching the community to hurt members. I think that there was some type of altercation, but I don't want to speculate on what that is. I don't want to go that until we know for sure. So I want to make sure we don't taint anything. I want to make sure we reach out and talk to our Commonwealth attorney as soon as I get to a point where I know that the school is secure, right? So, but there is. Remember, there's three parts. How our people are doing at the hospital, making sure that the school is cleared, and then the investigation part on our suspect and locating and identifying him. Were the four injured students? Yes. All four? Yes. Are parents still picking up their children? I'm going to let Dr. Parker talk a little bit about that. I don't want to, I don't want to get that confused. Good evening. Under these circumstances, uh, we, as we're speaking right now, students are being transported home. We have a parent pickup area at the tennis court, and we also have uh, called for early bus pickup, so our buses have already staged and have picked up the remaining students that have not been picked up by their families. So we are uh, reaching out um, electronically to parents to keep them informed of this situation, and we also want to confirm that all students are at home safely uh, this evening, so we're working out details on how we'll do that. Uh, this was very chaotic. But I would uh, say that the police and, uh, and local, local authorities handled this matter as best possible to make sure students were safe throughout the, um, from the time I arrived, we had this, the area contained. We allowed parents uh, to pick up students who were on site uh, and uh, put verification processes in place to ensure that students were, middle, our middle schoolers were going home with their actual parents and our guardians. Um, so I want to commend the police for, al for allowing us to manage our students safely and uh, sure and allow access for our parents d even during an, an active crime scene. That was, uh, if you can understand, that was very chaotic and, and, and there were a lot of folks who were really traumatized by this matter. I also want to commend the Heritage staff who uh, protect their students, made sure they ex ex exited the building, made sure they got to a safe area, and also uh, were with us throughout that time to make sure that uh, to assist with crowd control. Principal Hunter put out accurate communication in a timely way to parents and families. Under these circumstances, we can only respond, but I think our staff and our, and our local authorities did a wonderful job. So have I just want to commend Have you talked to the, the parents of the kids that got shot? No, ma'am, we have not. And uh, when those students are identified, I, that will be one of the first things we will do is make sure that we reach out and support those families. How does your school system protect students from other students bringing guns in? Are there any metal detectors or any search perimeters at this school? Well, uh, in many cases, we do random, random security checks of that nature, whether we bring in a dog, that uh, that does uh, that does random searches, or we bring in metal detectors to do random searches, and we also do searches um, off of buses randomly. So, we uh, we do not. Uh Every kid does not walk through a wand every day in, in most public schools, um, but I feel that we, are, we actively uh, uh, provide some level of deterrence for our students on a daily basis to ensure that our schools are safe. Can you speak to the location of the shooting? That is, uh, that is something that's under police investigation at this point. I have not been inside the building other than to, uh, to make sure that proper communication went out, and I have not involved myself in the active active investigation at this point. What are you telling parents who maybe have not been able to get a hold of their kid right now? That is what we're working on right now um, and as we receive reports we will work with those families to identify their students to make sure that uh, that if we still have them the students are calling with their cell phones. Some students as you can understand left their cell phones in the building so they were not able to reach their families and those are kids we're concerned about making sure that they have transportation uh, to their home. We sent out early dismissal messages. Uh, so we will be working with parents throughout the day to make sure that they uh, have put their eyes on their child. And what has this been like for you running everything and dealing with this terrible situation? No, no superintendent or no, no, um, no teacher or principal wanna go, want, would want to ever go through this situation. Um, just seeing the, the faces of our students and how afraid they were under these circumstances and our staff who were traumatized. We have had grief counselors on board on, um, in the on the tennis court talking to families, talking to students and uh, no one would want to go through these circumstances. And some of the kids that I was speaking with say they practice for this type of thing and that they had they had gone through drills. Tell me what you do to prepare for sh at school shootings. Our, prim our and primary approach is to shelter in place, make sure that you, um, that you do not create a hard target uh, and to make sure that uh, if someone is looking that they have to get through a locked door, they have to really, really go through on a search pattern to find a student and staff. So once the school goes to lockdown, uh, it's all about creating har harder targets for, the, for any um, uh, active shooter to find students. How yeah. often do they practice that? We, we do those re regularly um, and um, periodically throughout the school year. 
um, just to make sure that we have a regular, just like fire drills and other things, we do active shooter drills, we do evacuation drills, other, other things that might uh, help us make, make sure that students are safe. Um, we know that we went to lockdown and students were sheltering in place for quite some time and, th and then evacuated with, under police guidance. Given that somebody was able to get on campus with a gun and use that gun, do you anticipate discussions going forward about how you can lock down that security even better? Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll begin that work in the next few days. Um, students will, I anticipate, will be on virtual uh, learning for, for the next few days um, as we work with staff and work with our families to ensure that we have a safe way of returning students back to in-person instruction soon. But that will not happen until we have discussed this matter and looked at better ways to ensure that something like this never happens again. So virtual just for this high school? Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you have any reason to believe that this was somebody from the community who just walked onto campus undetected? Ma'am, I can't speculate on an active investigation at this time. Uh, I know that uh, Chief Drew and his, stat, his, his team are working on those details and we'll continue to provide updates on that. As for parent pickup, obviously we're all standing here, a ton of parents are here. I know no suspects in custody. Is it okay to still come get your kids in an orderly manner? Yes, I, I would say if you went, walk to that tennis court, you'll probably have to get through at least 30 police officers, law enforcement officers to get to that point. And we um, have staff in there making sure that parents are identified when they um, pick up their child. Um, the, the bus drivers have, uh, I see are loading now. I see the buses over to the right. Uh, and those buses are about to dismiss. So we, uh, we feel confident that any parent coming on the scene right now can, can access their child.